What's up guys, this is Frequent here with um, a very overdue tutorial. This is arrangement two of my arrangement series and if you've been following any of my tutorials you know it's been a few years since I've done one of these so I'm trying to get back on it here. Um, but ultimately when I went back to that first arrangement tutorial I, I even tried, I sat down for a couple hours and tried to make a follow-up video to that one. Um, and I just realized that I'm doing so many things differently now, like from the kick and snare, how I set that up to the side chain, to the sound design, like every aspect of it just felt uh, kind of dated for how I approach things now even. Um, so ultimately I decided to actually just kind of throw that whole idea out the window and start from scratch again for you guys and hopefully make some more progress with this one. Um, I've definitely switched up my workflow quite a bit and um, I figured I might as well just kind of save this first little bit that I made. So here's these sounds from the, the first arrangement tutorial. Maybe we can do something with these. Um, I'll give these a play really quick for you guys. Yeah, so maybe we'll do some with those, maybe not. Um, I just feel like everything that I did in that other video, I could have done better. So let's fucking do it so I'm gonna literally just start from the same place and grab a kick which this I haven't changed I'm still just searching randomly through kicks I really like to kind of force myself to decide on a few drum samples that are gonna establish the rest of the song the difference is I'm doing it in drum rack so that I can have multiple samples instead of just committing to one kick and one snare in audio early on um i feel like even listening back to that other tutorial i did it's like the snare isn't really as good as it could be and if we had a few options off the bat i think that would have been able to strengthen it a bunch and i find that a lot of times when i'm going through a song like the kick and snare are often such a defining characteristic that people kind of skim over and if you kind of just play around with those and switch out your samples and play with the pitch of them and the length and all that early on you can really kind of define your overall idea a lot more clearly out the get-go so basically I'm just gonna go and search kick and pull a bunch of different kicks that I like here so um, I don't necessarily know exactly the vibe I'm going for with this one um, I'm gonna try and I mean I'm gonna keep the tempo the same 87 same as these stems in case or I guess this one stem in case we want to use it um, but other than that I'm gonna go for something kind of heavy kind of hip hoppy um, but not worrying too much about the direction at this point so let's get through some of these and honestly this is like my least favorite part of writing music is just going through the abyss of samples but uh got to make sure that we find something that's going to really uh like ca carry the weight of the track if we're going to do something heavy um so i'm going to just keep on browsing that one's kind of interesting it doesn't sound like a main kick but maybe we could do something with it get one of uh, austin's kicks in there And I'm looking for something, um, because people ask me a lot, like, what am I actually looking for in these kicks? And it's, it's hard to say, uh, like, when you start describing these characteristics, it's a little bit ambiguous, the terms you're looking for. But honestly, I'm looking for something that's not too long, first of all. A lot of these things will have, like, really annoying long tails. And I'm looking for something that has a really nice, clear transient. Um, and then... Other than that, the rest of the character can kind of be whatever, but something like that just doesn't sound like it has quite enough front-end transient to me. Like, it, it feels like it's kind of rubbery. It's almost there, but I'm going to keep going. Something like that sounds kind of interesting. Throw that in there. See, like, these? Like, what is that giant tail on that? Just doesn't have any transient. So many bad kicks. That one's kind of cool. 
All right, so whatever. There's five kicks. I usually just do this until I feel like I want to die, and then I move on. <laughs> so let's go to the snares. Just do this exact same thing again. Uh, all right. That one's kind of cool. Snag that. That one's interesting. That's pretty good. to back get the the clap out like this little dinky snare we could do some of that that one's kind of nice too I recognize that from some I think that's in uh, uh, a Razat tune. I think that's in, uh, I don't remember the tune. Anyway. All right, getting pretty sick of it. So now we got some samples and this already right off the bat, we have a lot more to work off of than just one kick, one snare that we're gonna kind of just make a beat and then rely on the percussion to make it interesting we can actually do something kind of interesting with this variety of samples so i'm going to make us a nice short loop here uh with some midi um and then another thing that makes this process a little nicer is in live 10 they added the ability to edit both these clips at once so um i can go into like here and place a snare and then in here and place some kicks and then we can highlight both of them. And using this little tab up here, we can switch between the kick and snare and arrange them both in one spot. Or you can just click on the note and it'll switch over. So um, let's just kind of, it's kind of nice. I kind of like this like cheeky 80s drum and then uh, let's go and play with these snares see if we can get a different snare going and then uh, let's try getting like a second snare or something going also these are really quiet because of the velocity I think so we can And same on this kick. Let's just go ahead and I'm going to hold command and turn up velocity. And then I don't like the placement of that. Let's try, uh, let's go into triplet grid. Um, I'm using command one, two to go up and down in grid size, and then command three to go into triplets. Those ones are really good to know if you don't know. Um, control if you're on PC. That sounds dope. All right. Now let's get a boop to cat. Don't, don't. Let's just do it like that, I think. And let's just get all these velocities the same by maxing them out. I'll bring it down a little bit. And then let's see if we can get another one of these little pre snares in there. I like to use this little guy and then. So that already has some character to it. Uh, I also like this other snare. Um, and then we can, of course, go back and edit each of these individual samples if we want to. Um, so now I can 
go over to the device panel here, point and snare one, and I can throw whatever effects we want on here. Let's put uh, an EQ on here. It's got like this kind of ramping up high end thing, uh, which yeah, kind of is a thing for a snare, but I'm gonna just soften the highs a little bit on it and give it a little bit more low. End. And I think that'll let us compress it <laughs> even more, even though it's already a brick. Let's see if we can just get a little more out of it. Throw the glue on there, tack up, and then uh, just, just kind of. So that sounds all right. Um, maybe we could layer a snare or something. Up. I feel like the high end is just a little weird on it. Maybe we can layer this clap on it. That sounds kind of nice. And then I always like to just test again. Now that we've tried that one, see what this other snare sounds like again. That's kind of dip, actually. So yeah, I, I really love this whole workflow of like having a bunch of snares to play with, because uh, I think it just adds way more like, I don't know, you, you have way more flexibility than just having two samples and audio. All right, so we can work with that. Um, I'm gonna group up the kick and snare now. Uh, we'll just rename this kick snare. And then um, I'm going to go ahead and compress it. Turn the whole thing down. All right, so that sounds pretty cool. Now let's get some other drums in here, and we can do this any way we really want to. Um, I typically still we'll just type in whatever so let's try symbol um ugh. <laughs> some sleigh bells um well let's just drag a bunch of these in for right now and then if we can use them we can use them if not then whatever and notice that I'm doing these out of MIDI now um I, I really just like to do the kick and snare this way um, for a number of reasons that I'll get into in a second, one of the main reasons being you have uh, these sidechain inputs for the MIDI. I'll explain this once we have something to actually sidechain to, uh, but this is basically going to pick up all of this MIDI and send sidechain signals to whatever we want later. So that'll be really convenient. For, for the rest of this stuff, I still honestly prefer audio just for the amount of control I have over it. Um, and then to get around not having enough stuff, what we're going to do is just throw a ton of samples in here first, and then we'll kind of build up from there. So um, let's go find some more stuff. See, like something like that could be interesting. I like to find these loops, symbol loop. What's that? Uh, tight. That could be interesting. Um, what about this? Yeah, oh, these are tight. Just sound like some white noise loops. Good enough. Um, I can make myself do anything on this one. All right, I'm just gonna use this channel. Those are kind of weird. Uh, <laughs> cool. All right, so that's enough stuff to get us started. Let's see what we can do with these. Uh, I'm just gonna put this. What was, this was something dumb. What was this? 
the sleigh bell. All right, let's see if we can. <laughs> All right, we'll leave that. Uh, let's just try dragging one of these right in. So that sounds dumb. Let's try um, bringing the gate down on it using the um, forward mode on the transients here. So this isn't really triplety, so we can just go into triplet grid here, and um, I'm just gonna loop one little part of this, and then kind of stagger this over like that. We can even try like half time. Then let's play. I feel like the decay on this is too excessive. I'm just gonna delete a part of it and then. Maybe we can reverse it. This one's not gonna be triple zero. Let's uh, grab the triplet, see if we can get something interesting. Let's just try leaving that. Oops, whoa. I feel like this one's too off, but it is interesting. Let's turn grid off. try putting this like right after the snare like just turning off the grid and scooch it right in sounds bad try to let's try pitching this too i don't really like the pitch Getting rid of that sound. Maybe uh, bring this even a little, a little closer in. All right, then we'll try this over this. Alright, that's getting there. Um, 
So now let's try getting some of these, like, I want to put this thing in there really bad. Unwarp it. Let's try again. See if Tuner can pick this up, if we can just get the 10 out of it, or if we're going to have to work for it. <laughs> yeah, it's not going to be easy. It's pretty close. Uh, let's see. C show D E. Okay. Should be. Whoa. Alright, this one's pretty tight. Now let's get some of these washier guys in here. Uh, yep. Okay. That sounds tight, actually. Let's just. Maybe like. Alright, cool. So then we'll put this in. Alright, cool. So now we used all those. Um, so I'm going to group all these guys up. And this will be perks. Whoa. Good enough. And then... Um, what we can do is now we can put the side chain on. So how you set this up, um, you just take any operator patch. I'm also going to be making separate tutorials on a lot of the things I'm covering in here if I'm going quick, uh, just so you guys know. But uh, basically all you do is you make a white noise click by putting this in noise looped and then uh, fixing the pitch. Make a high pitch and then click it. And then all you have to do is set this to pull MIDI in from your kick and snare. So you just go uh, kick and then in and then any time the kick plays, you're going to get one of these. And then you can use this little click as the audio source to sidechain to other things. Um, so basically what I'm going to do is choose on my, I already have this built into all my sets, just this little click over here. Um, I'm going to put this in from the kick and then now that's my sidechain input and now all I got to do is um, throw a compressor on this perk group because I want to sidechain my perks to the kick and snare so these transients will come through this like mess of noise that we just made. Um, so I'm going to throw a compressor on here, do do do, uh, go to kick sidechain, duplicate it, uh, snare sidechain and I already have this basically set up for how I sidechain but we're going to want a decently high ratio, um, medium to low threshold, and then the release is where you're going to have to choose for every track. For the percussion, we probably don't want quite as much release, uh, but let's see. Let's just put it through and see how it sounds. And then I forgot we have to actually activate our snare sidechain here by choosing snare. Got monitor in on there, and now we're good. So now these aren't fucking with the transients of that, and we can just go ahead and group all of this up. And this will now be drums. And we can color it whenever you want. And then um, we can throw a glue compressor on this whole thing, or a drum bus, or whatever, and start getting some nice group processing on both of them. And since we have that side chain in there, now we can really slam them both together because this other stuff isn't going to get in the way of the kick and snare. So I like to try drum bus. Sometimes it's a little much, but uh, it's pretty cool. So we'll give it a go.
So that gets some nice distortion too. I'm gonna drop the dry wet on it though. And we'll just put a standard compressor afterwards just to get the maximum. <laughs> oh my god. Yes! Alright, so off the bat, we already got something with a lot of character here, and um, I think this gives us a much better basis to start jumping in and uh, making some sounds. Um, so in terms of that, again, I'm going to be doing a lot of, like, new sound design tutorials, um, a lot of, like, little, you know, tricks and tips, like this sidechain thing. I'll be going over all these things in more detail. Um, so one of my new favorite things ever is Faceplant, and I'm yet to make the actual sound design video for it. Um, so if you guys aren't familiar to this synth or you don't use it, um, that's okay. I'm going to try and keep it pretty minimal within the synth, but there's a lot of plugins that um, I end up using by kilohertz or kilohertz, um, like the disperser and their distortions are really good. Um, this is another thing I was going back and forth on for this tutorial is whether I should make it all Ableton exclusive stuff so that more people can use all the things but I think it'd be more beneficial to just show you guys how I'd actually write this song so I'm just gonna dive in um, and assume every tool I have and do what I would normally do um, but along the way I'll definitely be you know kind of giving you guys some ways you can do this without necessarily having all these plugins um, you don't need any of this you can do a lot of cool stuff with just the Ableton stuff um, but I found that, for instance, phase plant is one thing that allows you to get some pretty nutty sounds really fast. Um, so what I'm going to do is just open a phase plant and I'm going to try and kind of make a lot of the post-processing what makes the sound interesting so that we're not committed to having to have phase plant in order to make this sound. Um, but it, I'm gonna use it to make the core thing because you can just get some really cool tones pretty quick out of this thing So uh, first thing we got to do is add a wavetable Alright, and then we can start FMing so I'm just gonna take uh, I don't know. Let's just try something weird. Let's put harmonica in there and then I'm gonna FM this to the phase again if you're not familiar with uh, face plant uh, don't worry too much about all this interface I'll go over it later uh, but basically all I'm doing is FMing this thing that's not being played to this signal up here which is just uh, all your default waves from sine to square go down an octave so that sounds pretty nice and then um, I'm gonna basically just fold up this group and then make a new group here uh, with an output and a, another wavetable. In this wavetable, I'm just going to leave a sign wave. So we just have a separate sub, basically. Um, and now what I'm going to do is, unfortunately, in Faceplant, you have to macro out a lot of things if you want to automate them in the thing. So uh, I'm going to put a macro on this wavetable. So we can just get some cool sounds out of that. And then um, probably the level on this FM. It's another thing we can macro out. So just click on this target, drag it all. So we have all sorts of tones to work with. Um, also, what happens when we change the wavetable on the harmonica? Alright, that was pretty cool too. Um, maybe we can just put this uh, wavetable on both at the same time, that could be interesting. not as much on this one. That's a little messy. Uh, I'm just gonna get rid of that. 
um, by double clicking and then I'm gonna make a new macro for this one all right cool and then I'm gonna turn down the overall output of this one so we have more of that sine wave behind it down here maybe make this a little bit closer to a triangle just give it a little bit of juice there and then maybe we can detune this also and then I'm basically just gonna get out of phase plant so let's try using we have all these different pitch parameters here let's just try using sense there we go All right, cool. So that's that. Um, I'm gonna map these macros out into Ableton. So macro one, click this one. Macro two, click this one. Macro three, and now we have all those. Close this guy out. All right, cool. So now let's start putting some effects on this thing. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is destroy it with a wave shaper. Uh, you can use any wave shaper. For this one, I'll use Melda just because it's free, so anyone can get this one. Um, I'm not going to explain wave shaping. I'm just going to go ahead and start drawing some random stuff. <laughs> So now we have a lot of like high end harmonics and like kind of harsh upper end content. Um, before we mitigate that, I'm just going to put a huge chain of effects on this so that we can start getting a more interesting sound. So first runner up is going to be due to OTT. Slap this sucker on here. Just play with these parameters a little bit because uh, Typically, it's going to kind of soften the sound a little bit until you, like, bring this depth down. Play the time. And then uh, we're going to turn this down, and we're just going to give this the duplicado. And then we can just keep going and tweaking all the... Turn it down. All right, so this is gonna allow us to do some really drastic things at the very beginning of this chain. So now what I'm gonna do is grab an EQ and we can really just start shaping it. And uh, we're gonna get a ton of artifacts from the distortion in OTT. So um, what we do in here is gonna kind of define the whole character of the sound. Because right now we just have a wall. So that's pretty dope. Um, let's go ahead and just um, <laughs> leave this giant 30 dB boost right there. Grab the frequency. Um, I'm going to just boop. And then let's group all this stuff together now. And start putting this on macros. So I'm going to put this all on its own macro. Boop. Oop, and then put this one on its own macro and now we have all these effects we can Ooh. so that's pretty cool um let's try i don't know 
doing something more destructive to it. I almost feel like it has too much high end stuff still. Let's put an EQ after all this stuff. Yeah, we have like this huge boost. Cut out some of the very top end. Maybe we can soften this up just a hair. All right, so now I'm gonna run it through our faithful friend, Glue Compressor, who is gonna further destroy everything. Now we can turn this channel back up a bit because we have a limiter on the software. Thing. All right, so now we have an interesting little instrument here. Um, there's infinite places you could go from here but I figured the easiest way to get us going is just to start um, you know arranging some stuff in there getting some ideas and then I uh, decide if we're gonna balance them out to audio let me uh, just listen to this beat for one second see if I can get some ideas <laughs> Let's see what we can get here. First thing I'm gonna do is group this up. Um, we'll put this other, this is the stem. Throw that in this group too, in case we wanna use those. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and put a side chain on this. Actually, let's just copy the side chain from here for now. From our perks, and name this base. And then on here, I'm gonna give us just like a bit of MIDI. Uh, we'll choose E arbitrarily, and then all right, that's already kind of cool. Um, let's try automating some of this stuff. And then let's try just like getting some. Uh, first of all, we're in triplets, so make sure we do triplets. And then uh, I'm just gonna turn that off and kind of draw some. And then let's try putting some. We gotta find like an interesting rhythm here. Let's see if we can repeat that. We can play with the automation later. See if we can make a response thing here. So right on this snare, I'm gonna. Put in triplets. All right, so now let's see if we can automate these back.
try just getting like it's almost cool turn off grid for this So that's all right. And then the other way I like to do it so we can get some nice specific arrangements like that going. Um, but I also like to just kind of wing it randomly over this. So let's get some of these early ones. Come on, why not? Let's try to get the automation on this one. So there's some interesting ideas we can take from this. I don't give a shit about this rack, so I'm actually, nope, don't give a shit about it. So I'm gonna freeze it and flatten it, and let's see if we can get something more interesting out of these guys. So um, first thing I'm gonna do, see what we got in here. Those are interesting, these like little tails of it. I think I actually just like this pluck part of it. It's kind of cool. It's too lame though. Fuck that. Let's just try grabbing uh, a couple more of these more coherent cuts out of it. Loop it up. Yeah, I like this to get to get.
don't even like that down. All right, so let's uh, let's focus on this one main little riff. I think we get something cooler out of this. Do it, do it, do it. So let's listen to the sound. Sounds a little lame. So let's get something interesting going on here. I'm gonna use the kilohertz resonator on this. You can use the Ableton one if you want to. Um, and this one's just way more straightforward. So let's just put in a high E. I was going to turn off my internet so that no notifications come in. I don't think. That's very really cool. So that little sound works, and now let's see if we can just pull this out. Grab a different cut. So. down an octave even. Then we can adjust the timing of this to be exactly where we want it to. So now let's try to find a new sound that's going to be a little more interesting. So uh, this one, let's go, um, I don't know, serum, just anything, doesn't really matter. Um, I'm going to use the acid waveform and uh, a saw wave. Let's tune the sound wave a little bit. Um, and then I'm gonna use. So this is um, <laughs> this is pretty drastic, but basically what I'm gonna do is turn this channel way down. Um, I'm gonna take reverb filter. I'm going to clip the absolute shit out of it so that we don't even hear it. <laughs> yeah, there it is. So that's clipping a lot out of Serum. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take our Wave Shaper and just do something to this. So 
So yeah, we're gonna start to get these parts where it's gonna like choke out. I love those sounds. Put chords through it. Let's go up. these really like broken stutters and uh, some nice tones out of it we can also um, I mean do the same uh, get the dude up. Uh, just crank these up Sorry about that one. Give it another one of those. Another one. I don't know. <laughs> um, and then now let's play with our thing. Oh, oh, my computer hated that. Ooh, but that sounds dope. Oh my god. It's like clipping at negative 55. Alright, so let's put the glue compressor on. It's probably... Oh, that's so sick. So now let's see if we can get something cool out of that. And then grab our filter cut off. Start uh, tinkering. I'm gonna expand this one a little bit. Um, we don't even necessarily have to make it fit in the arrangement because we can bounce it out. But I'm just trying to get some like cuts that will work with what we got. Uh, let's try doing a couple notes maybe. And then we can play with this. So 
sounds tight. So those are some nice broken sounding ones. Let's see if we can get something a little more melodic out of it by using higher notes. Let's see if we can get a little something something. Jesus. <laughs> struggling to get through there. What if we drop this A? That sounds tight. Oof. And then what if we do the... oops. Man, I just got this new keyboard and I I can keep hitting the wrong thing. All right. Um, what if we just take this whole chunk and then reinvert the E instead of the A? Just bring this E down, pop that E or A back. Maybe, maybe up an octave there. No, it doesn't like that. <laughs> it's kind of tight. Oh, that's way too low. This one's still too high. Oh, that's cool. Ooh. That's tight. All right, let's make one more. Actually, fuck it. Let's just commit to those. I'll save the patch. Just in case, um, and we'll just freeze this out. A flat on. Oh, a flat on. What a waveform. All right, that's how you know. That's, yeah. That's how you know it's good. Okay, so uh, now I'm going <laughs> to fucking turn that down. And then I can turn the channel back up a little bit. And we can uh, shrink this back down. We can grab some of these crunches. Start to like. And then we can grab kind of the more tonal parts here.
nice little melody going. A little loop going so um now i think we can just add uh, a sub under this and then we gotta kind of double out our loop here and figure out more ideas so um gonna just you know grab a sub really quick i already got our side chain let's just make it a default sine wave for now Actually really like how the dry sine wave sounds right there um, but I want to make a second one that's gonna just be like a big 808 over this part like just give it an envelope so I'm gonna drop this just detune this ever so slightly and then give it a big old compressor two loops and let's figure out what we can improve in this I really like that So remove this snare fill on this first one, this little second guy.
I'm feeling like a a plucky sort of thing right now, honestly. Um, like some sort of, I don't know, pluck bass. Um, let me play it one more time and think about it for a second. Um, yeah, let's try making something in serum. Some sort of plucky plucky. So, first instinct is definitely just start putting an envelope. Um, and I want this to be, um, basically just a sign of, for now. And then let's put a second one on the pitch. Just going one way. Um, gonna go envelope. And then turn off BPM. Get that nice little punch. Kind of make it look like a kick, almost. Um, then I'm gonna turn off the BPM here. And then uh, let's turn off this for a second. Just get some FM from it. And then we can play with this. Put it up an octave. Turn the random phase down. Let's add some sort of, I don't know, let's be weird with it. Let's try a phase. Alright, sounds weird. Um, then let's go and a little bit of noise in there too. tight to play a melody with. Oops, killed this one. Let's give it a little bit more decay. triplets and fix that up.
feel like it still needs more decay. That's kind of cool with the space. First of all, the white noise is pissing me off. All right, so I'm gonna use this uh, pitch shifter. isn't quite beefy enough I'm gonna hit it with um, kilohertz distortion I love the fold back on it all right we're clipping pretty badly at this point I'm gonna just turn everything down This thing is clearly way too loud. Sounds a little better, let's try smashing it. And then uh, EQ is probably good. This thing kind of sounds dumb. Let's 
try changing the pitch one more time. We're probably just gonna get rid of this. Let's try distorting the fuck out of it first. It's always a good idea. these I kind of want to trim down the high end a little bit all right so now um, let's go ahead and hit this with a limiter at this point so grab the pro L give it uh, the transparent I don't know why I like that one but I like that one let's give it a boost oh go back to the So now that I have that brought up, I can tell um, that this thing definitely needs some EQing. Give this little crunch some more meat. See how it's all flat? We got it. And then we have a sub under there. So now we are running low on sounds again, so it's probably about time to make another sound. Um, trying to think what would sound tight over this. Let's listen just one more time. Um, I don't know. Let's just make something and see what happens. Let's go to faceplant. Um, I like using this filter as um, an AM source, which makes absolutely no sense to me, but it sounds cool. <laughs> so we're gonna put it on here. So let's go ahead and make this a little more. Sine wavy. And then we can go ahead and start adding distortion. Again, I'm going to do this. 
first and add a second output in this group so that we can have a sub. And let's put some resonators in here. A is good. Let's try an A and an E. It's just going to add some tones in there. If I hold Option and drag this or Alt, I can make two of them. And then go back up to A on this one. turn the decay down on these guys the intensity up all right and then let's destroy it more always good to destroy it more I wish I knew why that was happening, but try different. I know this boost can be cool. Uh, let's go ahead and put the. Uh, resonators after this maybe or maybe try that enjoy spreading this too So this distortion is ruining it a little too hard, I guess. Always a bummer. Let's bring the mix down. Turn the bars. Love disperser so much. So we can try maybe macroing both of these to the same thing. And then just limiting the macro so it doesn't go super high up. Wait till it's okay. So now we have this nice vocally texture we can work with. All right, so now let's uh, max this guy out a little bit. I'm gonna take this. Gonna take. Um, I don't know. Maybe let's use a different distortion. Let's try amp. So 
maybe make it a little percussive by uh, that's kind of sick So let's get that. sitting somewhere and let's try kind of tight. Let's see if we can get somewhere what do we got with this <laughs> sounds like it's not distorted enough in comparison so let's go ahead and just throw the amp on it <laughs> perfect the macro is not in the right spot for these we can play with these again to get it That's like that, but that's tight. This one still just doesn't feel like 
feels so high endy. So now let's try and lock this side chain in a little bit more. See if we can get that a little bit punchier. we can get the high end a little bit back in this since we oh that's what we need to do <laughs> oh, that's tight okay so now we just grab this thing we could probably make this cooler honestly so we can only play one at a time. 
so that the tails don't overlap, but I'm going to add a little, a little release to that. Add a little bit of feedback. And then uh, I'm going to click and press this guy. This thing sounds fucked now. It's gonna delete the sleigh bell. And then, uh, yeah, that should give us a pretty good basis to write the rest of this. Um, because now all we have to do is basically duplicate this. Probably. Let's try uh, changing these notes. Try uh, changing the rhythm there. Instead of doing this, we take, um, where is it, the stem, Let's see if there's anything out of this we can pull now. 
Let me just gotta find it. this one too so let's do it
with the doo <laughs> Uh, everything else has it, so. So yeah, this thing can really ruin a sound. You gotta make sure. up with this guy sounds like this guy needs OTT sounds dope Also try playing with the white noise we're using in serum, that'll change the sound a lot. That's dope too. top on I think we can maybe have the first two be low and then that one be there.
like this one, um, the notes get too close together. I should probably shorten this one a little bit. I don't know how much. Bumping. All right, so that's our that's our basis. I'd say I think we made a lot more progress in terms of making something that actually sounds like a song. I'm just gonna duplicate that out right there. Um, this is a good spot to kind of call it. I think um, for the next one, I'll be able to now move on from this one idea. We have a good riff. We have something that sounds like a you know sort of complete idea. Um, we could easily make a B section to this, start making an intro, get all to that stuff next time. Um, but yeah, I think this is a much more um, stripped down way of showing all the things that I do. I know I didn't do a lot of uh, explaining each individual thought process this time. It was more just kind of giving you guys a glimpse into my workflow. Um, I've kind of tried to start using this hybrid of audio and MIDI because um, I find that that's where the sweet spot is of controlling all your shit so um, as you're able to see I was able to get a bunch of random noises that we have kind of filling in the background here and that's where the audio cuts come in and then to generate some sort of actual musical idea we have these things in MIDI and I think it's really important to kind of balance these two things and that is not what I was doing at all in that other tutorial and it's not how I used to write music at all I used to be uh, very adamant about using audio for everything and I've found that if you kind of split it up and actually do some instrumentation, um, you can get some more melodic stuff while still maintaining control over these kind of fill cuts. And these are where you can put pretty much any sound. So um, this is where you can get those really crazy distorted or talky or whatever, like your, your weirdest sounds you kind of put at the ends of these phrases. And then you got to find some main riff or element. Um, so that's basically the strategy I've been approaching writing a song with is just get some drums going and then um once you have some sounds you start try to start trying to like generate a melody or an idea or a riff or something to kind of loop everything else around and then once you have that main idea um you can kind of just stretch it out a bunch of times and change the fills at the end and add slight variations and that's all the song is like it's just repeating a thing a bunch of times with variation so I like to spend all my time in this small compartmentalized loop just kind of uh, chipping away at the stuff I don't need and getting the, the strongest point of the idea in there and if you really spend your time there um, you'll see that it's really easy to start just duplicating it out and moving some shit around to get your final product instead of trying to write an entire drop in one sitting. So that's something that hasn't changed. I, I really do keep working in these compartmentalized loops. Uh, the difference is last time I just never really hit on a musical idea that um, inspired anything, you know, it was just kind of a bunch of random sounds. And even in this one, I was only barely able to get anything out of those sounds because while they're interesting, they don't really have much of um, a musical quality to them and to sit there and try to make music with that type of sound I mean I myself have run into that roadblock a million times a lot of people I teach have run into that as well where they're just sitting there kind of fucking with a loop forever but not getting any music out of it um, so hopefully this gives you guys some ideas in terms of how to you know build some strategies towards these melodic ideas and um, get everything kind of working as a unit and then for the next time we'll start getting more into the, like the layering and building out the idea and adding you know other sections and stuff but this is really uh, where everything will stem from because we have a melody now we have a bunch of sounds we can start cross pollinating these sounds across other sections we can start making new synths that build into this uh, motif of this first melody here um, and yeah, that's really that. I'll play this for you guys one more time, and then uh, I'm gonna get out of here.
awesome. Thank you guys for watching. Um, hit me up if you want to do private lessons. Go to my website. I got all sorts of goodies for sale over there. And um, yeah, I'll be back on this shit now. So I'll see you guys in the next one. Cheers.